our East Africa correspondent Sarah Kimani to join us via Skype to talk to us a little bit more about uh, the latest uh, with terms of uh, these restrictions and uh, easing of some of those. Sarah, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me, Peter. Good evening. All right. So did the Kenyans get what they expected from uh, the president today? Well, uh, a section of them did, and they're excited that uh, after more than uh, six months of not having uh, been able to enter a bar and enjoy a beer with friends, they can now do that freely uh, because bars will finally be reopened. And there are those uh, who lost their jobs or who have had their, you know, livelihoods, those who work in those bars or who own those entertainment spots who have lost their income all this time. And so, indeed, a section of Kenyans quite excited uh, that they can finally uh, resume those entertainment joints. Uh, there are those who are happy that uh, uh, the curfew hours have been extended, meaning if somebody uh, had a business that uh, they used to run uh, through well, the evening, they can now extend that period and be able to earn a little more money. However, uh, some parents are still not happy that schools uh, will remain closed. There are also those uh, who own private schools who feel that uh, it's been too long and schools have been closed for too long and so they feel they're making losses. There are those students who uh, were probably supposed to sit their national examinations and may now be forced to uh, repeat a whole academic year. Some of them are feeling disgruntled. But generally, mixed reactions here in Kenya. All right, let's talk about education. Uh, I remember a few weeks ago I spoke to uh, a senior figure in the education department there and they said that, look, schools were only going to open next year. Was there something that was uh, is reviewed in the interim then? Well, uh, there have been discussions, uh, education stakeholders have been having meetings, and indeed up to last week, uh, there were rumors and uh, which seemed credible that schools, that today President Kenyatta would actually announce that schools will be reopened uh, from next week in a first fashion, in that uh, candidates who are supposed to sit uh, the equivalent of the South African metric, and those who are also supposed uh, to sit their primary school examinations would be the first to resume schools in October, and then the rest would follow maybe two weeks or thereabout. But it seems that is not going to happen now. The Kenyan president insisting more on safety. But um, in a story that we'll be showing you actually on uh, this coming Wednesday on African Perspectives, you'll be able to see uh, just the inequalities that this closure of schools has brought, but also uh, the amount of losses that uh, uh, those who run private schools uh, have been suffering. Some of them have had to close uh, those businesses completely, and they are now keeping pottery in those uh, premises that were once their schools. In the public primary schools, uh, most of the children are just out playing because uh, the, their parents may not be able to afford on the gadgets or the internet. So those are some of the issues that are coming out and probably the reason why there is that pressure on the president and the education ministry to reopen schools. There's also a feeling that uh, a lot of people, and especially girls, may fall out of the way uh, in areas where early marriages are common, especially uh, in the northern parts of Kenya, among the Maasai community, where girls uh, during this season, when the holiday is too long, they'll either be subjected to female genital mutilation and Finally, early marriages. So these are some of the reasons and concerns uh, that um, stakeholders in the sector are raising. But the government are raising issues of safety, saying safety in terms of uh, how do we uh, social distance, how are the facilities in these schools enough to ensure that when this more than uh, three million children go back to school, will they be able uh, to be safe within those uh, walls that are called schools? All right. Remind us, uh, what's the situation in terms of tertiary institutions, colleges and universities? Well, uh, it's the graduation season right now, and so uh, it's a fast here in Kenya. We are seeing uh, university graduates or gr graduations happening online. Uh, quite exciting, but for some, and especially um, in a culture where uh, we uh, take busloads of people, of our relatives, uh, to those institutions to be able to witness our graduation, that moment of pride is not there anymore. And so um, that is one of the things that uh, has been lost in the new 
normal. Uh, no, institutions of higher learning will also remain closed, according to President Kenyatta, but they will be allowed to open once they appear to uh, the COVID-19 uh, health protocols that have been put in place. We still have not had any of them reopen, although uh, the Minister for Education, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, has mentioned some institutions and said that they have met those regulations. For now, all institutions of learning, whether higher learning or basic education, remain closed here in Kenya. All right. So uh, some would say th there seems to be mixed messages about uh, the safety of uh, citizens, because on the one hand, you're saying that churches are allowed 200 members now. Uh, you're saying bars can stay open. However, the curfew stays in, is increased to 11 p.m. Make sense of this for us, Sarah. Well, uh, some people have actually asked uh, the wisdom in that. President Kenyatta has argued that uh, the reason that they are reopening bars is to begin uh, uh, rebo uh, boosting the economy and to begin reviving the economy because that sector has also lost billions in terms of earnings, both for the people who work in that sector and also for the government. Now, they believe that uh, if people will be allowed to uh, mingle for a, a shorter period, then maybe uh, the, they can be able to control and to be able to... Uh, uh, take, you know, limit the amount of socialization that will be there. Uh, in churches, I must admit, I went to church yesterday for the first time, and uh, it is impressive the amount of uh, safety protocols that they have put. You get into church, you must register uh, your name, your telephone number, you're given a particular seat so that uh, for the benefit of contact tracing, um, and you only sit at that point. So maybe in churches it is easier to control the crowds. I'm not very sure the wisdom in uh, how they will control the crowds in the bars. I didn't hear anything about register, registering people before they go in. Um, they'll probably be made to wash their hands. But remember, uh, there is no way you're going to have your uh, drink, your favorite drink with a mask on. So there are going to be those issues. But also another thing that... Uh, health experts have warned is that Kenyans should not relax and they should not say that uh, uh, the curve has completely flattened because even though the numbers are coming down, the number of tests, and the World Health Organization has also warned on this, the number of tests that the country is carrying out have also reduced drastically, meaning uh, there could be a lot of people who are falling out of the way. Uh, when the contact tracing was decentralized and moved to the counties, we have seen that also uh, getting lost in the way. So there has not been enough contact tracing. So the country is still not out of the woods. And President Kenyatta was also very clear on this, uh, warning that personal responsibility will be very important. Otherwise, the country risks a second wave. All right. So uh, from your observations, are people wearing masks and doing the basic things such as uh, social distancing? Uh, I know that in, in some areas here in South Africa, not everybody is complying. What's the situation in Nairobi, for example? Well, uh, it's um, because it is a law and it is gazetted, it is a crime. If you're not uh, found wearing a mask, you'll find uh, people will have the mask here on the chin or they will have it here on the forehead. Well, they're having the masks. Uh, the only thing is probably not wearing it very well. But also the other thing that happens is you cannot enter any public a building or public institution in the country without a mask on, so that has helped a great deal. Uh, uh, a lot of people are still working from home, so uh, social distancing has been easy. Uh, in supermarkets, uh, you, you will have uh, to go in numbers. They don't allow uh, a whole crowd to go in, so there are security guards at the door who will count the number of people coming in at any given time and uh, to, to allow for social distancing. When you get in, you'll see markings on the floor that show you where you can stand so that you, you keep the distance with, with the person ahead of you. Um, generally, Kenyans are, are, are trying uh, to keep um, the rules and, and regulations, also because uh, the amount of brutality uh, that has been meted on those uh, who have uh, failed uh, to, uh, you know, adhere to these regulations before when they were just introduced was uh, was quite hard. And so people sometimes have done it out of fear. Uh, but it has worked. And I must admit that uh, probably the numbers would have been higher if uh, Kenyans had not adhered to these health protocols. All right. So one measure often about uh, economic activity is uh, how much traffic you have at uh, rush hour. Nairobi, I've been through the traffic there a few times and it's a nightmare uh, early in the morning and uh, in the evenings when you're going home. 
How has traffic started to pick up as these uh, restrictions have been uh, lifted? Are we starting to see more and more activity? Indeed, uh, one of the ways of knowing whether business is back to normal in Nairobi is the amount of traffic. And in, traffic is back, uh, and it is back in huge numbers, especially because uh, uh, in terms of pu public transportation, uh, the issues of social distancing. And so those people who would normally use uh, uh, their vehicles are now having, uh, who, who would use uh, public transport are preferring to use their vehicles. And so the roads are clogged, even though schools are still closed. And it is indeed, uh, a lot of people actually uh, resumed work even before President Kenyatta made this announcement, uh, mostly because uh, the, the economy in Kenya is mainly informal and people have to wake up and go to the, what we call Juakali, you know, standing under the hot sun to be able to earn a living. And so people, uh, by the second month, people had already gone back to work. Now it's six months since uh, the first case was announced here, so you can imagine everybody's back to work. It's only uh, the most formal economies where you will find uh, people are still working from home. But uh, anybody who must go out and earn their living, all, all of them are back on the road. All right, uh, Sarah, always great talking to you. Uh, as usual, Asante Sana Kwaheri. Karibu Sana. Okay. Lala Salama. Thanks so much. That's Sarah Kamani.